Hello, friends. I'm Ramon Rocha, and I'd like to welcome you all to today's MAI webinar, How to Write Academic Articles for Publication. Our guest moderator today is Kingston Ogango from Kenya. He is a trustee of MAI Africa and also serving as board member of several other local and international Christian organizations. Kingston is an award-winning designer in creative, brand and media strategy, in marketing and communications. Kingston will introduce the topic and, and introduce our speaker today. Thank you, Kingston. Thank you so much, Ramon. Uh, welcome all to our webinar today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're tuning in. We know we have people from the United States, we're from India, we're from Africa and other continents. And we want to just welcome you to this time. Uh, we are going to have a good time, I believe. And uh, our, uh, our panelist today is a seasoned man, uh, Dr. Kiama Mugambi. Dr. Mugambi, I've known him for many years. He's uh, also been a pastor for several years. So as he brings in two hats, one of an academician, but also a man who is passionate about spreading the gospel and speaking into the lives of people. Dr. Kiyama serves as the editorial manager of African Theological Network Pray as an initiative ad advancing theological discourse among academics and church workers. He's also an author of a book written called A Spirit of Revitalization, Urban Pentecostalism. Pentecostalism. How do you pronounce that in Kenya? Uh, he'll tell us a little more. Um, and part of his editorial board, uh, he's, uh, he's worked on the Dictionary for African Christian Biography and Missio Africanas, whatever that means, he will also unpack for us that. Uh, he lectures in several universities here in Nairobi, Kenya, and is an associate researcher at the Center of World Christianity based in at African International University. I know uh, I have not done a very good job of introducing my friend here. And so I'll be asking him uh, to come on board and just tell us a little more that I have not said. And also be, as we begin this particular webinar, Dr. Kiama, welcome. And in Kenya, we say Karibu. Uh, tell us a little more about yourself, your family, and then we can begin on the webinar. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you for the for the generous inter introduction. Uh, I um, am the husband uh, to a boy and have three children, and we live uh, here in Nairobi, a capital city uh, of Kenya. And as you mentioned a little earlier, I have been a pastor for, for a couple of decades uh, with uh, with the Nairobi Chapel family of churches, particularly with uh, with the Mapuno uh, community. And uh, it's, it's a joy to be a part of this. Um, as you mentioned, um, you know, I'm, I'm an author uh, of you know, several book chapters. And uh, most recently, uh, my academic book, um, A Spirit of Revitalization, which is really uh, telling uh, a short history uh, of, uh, of uh, Pentecostalism uh, in Kenya. Um, you asked about uh, Missy Africanas, and uh, <laughs> Missy Africanas is uh, uh, is a, a, an organization that uh, equips and trains and uh, produces a journal, uh, equips and trains uh, Christians, African Christians in the diaspora. Uh, and it is based out of the UK. Uh, and, and so that's what Missio Africanas is. And again, you know, that's a journal organization. The um, Dictionary of African Christian Biography is, a, is another um, organization that, um, you know, is committed to telling the history uh, of, uh, of of African of Africans uh, and people involved in Africa, uh, and again, it also produces a journal that uh, that I am a part of. Oh. So I'm excited uh, to uh, to be here this uh, this morning for some people, afternoon for others, and evening uh, for us. Fantastic! Thank you so much. You know, I miss you, Africana. Sounded like a biological name of something, and so we needed to unpack that just to uh, be sure. So just before we go into uh, the time when our panelists will give us some information, I'd like to remind you we have a Q&A right at the uh, bottom of your panel. You can put their questions. And then we have a chat 
where you can put your comments. We'd like to encourage you to do that. Put your questions in the Q&A and any other comments you can put in the chat. And I want also to encourage you, if you are here, put down your name in the chat box and which country you're coming from so that we can acknowledge and see uh, the diversity that we have this evening, this morning, or this afternoon as we go into this webinar. And so from now, I don't want to take too much time. I want to allow um, Dr. Mugambi maximum time just to come and share with us. And so as we begin this, Dr. Mugambi, mm -hmm. the people who are here and are wondering, what is academic writing? And how different is it from other forms of writing? Because you know, we, we, you said academic writing for publication. So even before we go for publication, what is academic writing and what is that all about? Mm -hmm. So academic, academic writing is, is really uh, any piece of writing that, uh, that is written for purposes of, uh, of use within an academic institution or within an academic community. And so that would include journal articles, it would include uh, conference proceedings, it includes academic books, uh, it includes, uh, you know, academic papers. Um, and for certain specialized disciplines, it includes documents, uh, research documents, and, and so on. So all that is academic uh, writing. Today we'll be focusing on a particular kind, uh, which, whose principles will filter into other, other kinds of, uh, of academic writing as well. Okay, now that you, you have said that, thank you so much. Now, take us the next step. Uh, when you talk about this, you said a certain type of academic writing. First of all, tell us what are the types of academic writing that exist, and then now you can zero down into this other one so that we can build up. You know, some of us are still learning what academic writing is. So, so academic writing, like I said before, academic writing um, spans a range of different uh, of different uh, types. Um, you know, like I mentioned and said, you know, we have journals, we have uh, documents, we have conference proceedings, we have academic books. Uh, but let me also say that uh, academic writing for different uh, disciplines will require different, uh, sometimes markedly different kinds. Of writing. So, for example, for a, a mathematics academic, um, the um, mathematicians will solve particular problems. Uh, and so their papers, for example, will include uh, some writing, but then it also includes uh, specialized mathematical uh, formulae. Uh, when you have other sciences, you know, biological sciences or, um, you know, sciences that involve uh, exper experiments in the lab, again, you have uh, certain kinds of, of, of writing. Uh, then when you get into the social sciences and, and uh, the humanities, these are you know, the social sciences, um, th these are some of the subjects in the economics and, uh, and so on, and the humanities like history, philosophy, and so on. Uh, you, those, those kinds of writing um, usually are longer, they're more extended, uh, but the principles apply, and I'll be sharing those in a moment. Thank you. You know, my son, one time I was studying and he came to my desk and found this big book and the book was just black and white. And then he perused through it, he perused through it, and then he looked at me and said, Dad, why are you reading this book without pictures? Now, there's a sense we see academic writing as this, uh, you know, just boring writing, this black and white, big books, uh, yeah. But I've also heard of terms like, you know, Turebian, MLA. What are all those terms? What, are, what, what does that all mean in terms of academic writing? So um, there the, the are different things that aid the writing. So the, within what you, what, what you write, uh, there are um, uh, what I would say, the, the body or the content that, uh, that, you, want, uh, that you want to share. Uh, but then, um, in addition to the content, there are um, sources, academic sources. So, so um, for example, one would say um, the, 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 the places where you find the information that shapes your, uh, that shapes your, your writing. So, uh, so, for example, um, you would, one would say, um, you know, if, if I am writing a historical document, then there will be 
uh, uh, sources or, or you know, the person who told me the, the things that I'm going to write in the, in the history. And so how do you then, uh, what is called, cite those, those, those sources? How do, you, uh, how do you tell your readers uh, about the people that have given you that information? So that's where, um, um, you know, uh, things like Turabian, for example, will, will help. Uh, and uh, and Chicago uh, Chicago styles, and so what they do is that uh, number one they tell you how to cite your sources, uh, or they they create parameters uh, for you to cite your sources. You know, like you know Chicago uh, American uh, Psychological Association, um, and and others uh, like those ones, Elsevier, uh, Harvard. Um, and, and, and those ones. Uh, so those, all those have their own way of, of, of uh, citing the sources. And those, those methods uh, uh, sometimes can be discipline specific. So they, some of them span some particular disciplines, others span you know, all, all disciplines, you know, like Chicago, for example. Uh, but then some of those some of those styles will also um, also help you to uh, to narrow down, for example, on uh, on uh, the the uh, the way you you um, the the consistency of saying certain things. So, for example, the consistency of certain abbreviations. Uh, you know, do for example, if you're if you're you know citing a name or an abbreviation for a particular title, do you put a do you put a full stop at the end or don't you put a full stop at the end? So that kind of uh, that kind of uh, um, standardization, so that when you open the big book, which is 200, 300, 400, 500, sometimes 600 pages long, or the volume, uh, the the volumes of what you are you're writing. Uh, or even the the journal that uh, that you want to write or want to read from, uh, you find that there's a consistency. And so, this this journal today, to the journal tomorrow, you know, all of them are um, are, are consistent. Thank you. Now, having picked that, uh, there are standards that are used to write an academic article. Mm -hmm. What are the do's and don'ts? Maybe just unpack for us, what are the, some of the ways you make sure that a document or an article is written to, the, to, to make the standards of academia? Yeah, allow me to just share, some, uh, share from, from, from a screen over here, uh, if, I, if I may. Um, so, some of the do's and don'ts of, of, uh, of, of writing your academic piece. And I want to, to limit myself to uh, writing of an academic uh, journal as an example, uh, of, uh, as an example of, of a piece of academic writing. Now, uh, a good thing to do uh, in, in, your, in, your, uh, in writing your academic piece, uh, particularly if you're writing a journal, uh, you want to uh, you, you want to make sure that you have um, you know a good introduction. Um, academic writing usually will have uh, an introduction. Within the introduction, you say uh, in there what you intend to do or what you the the things that you intend to say. In most academic uh, journals, you will talk about the the your findings, you know your preliminary findings, your your ideas, your argument. Uh, if you're making a particular argument. Uh, you're going to uh, want, within the introduction, uh, to, have, um, to have your background. Uh, uh, you want to uh, you know, let everyone know where you are coming from and how your particular piece of writing fits into, uh, the, uh, fits into, the, the, um, into the, the genre or the particular subject. Uh, and you outline that, uh, your argument, you outline uh, what, what exactly you're saying. Uh, and, and this is an important one, particularly for those of us who come out of normal writing, you know, the writing in the office or writing letters and get into academic uh, writing, because every piece of academic writing, there's something that you're, you're trying to say. There's a, there's a claim you're making. There's an argument you're putting forward. Uh, in some places, we say there's a thesis uh, that you have. There's, there's an idea that you want to communicate. 
Uh, and so, you know, you want to, to, uh, to outline that in the introduction and then flesh it out through your, your, your article. And, and, and through your article, that's where now you talk about, uh, you know, what, what your data is. And the data is not just one experiment that you get out of an experiment or out of interviews, but the data could also be historical, uh, historical data. Data is just uh, um, fact that, that you gather from uh, other people or from, you know, observations. Uh, you gather from the writings, you gather from interviews and other ways of gathering the data. And then you analyze that data. That data says, something but you as the academic writer needs to piece together what what uh, what, what you're trying to say or what your data the argument that your data is putting forward uh, and and um, you know with the analysis uh, one of the things that uh, is usually very helpful particularly in the social sciences uh, if, you're, if you're writing you know a piece of of, of, of history, if you're writing some, you know, some sociology uh, or anthropology, um, if you're writing some of those, uh, and even other kinds of academic writing as well, you need to engage with the context. Uh, that is what gives uh, some grounding to, to what you're writing. Uh, and then, you know, at the end of what, what you have said, then you put in, you put in a conclusion. Uh, and within the conclusion, you have you have two uh, two two things you want to put there. The first is is to round up your argument again, you know, bring together your argument uh, once more. Uh, and in some kinds of writing, you know, for example, if you're writing about development, or you're writing about economics, or you're writing about you know some some context, uh, especially for those of us who are from the majority world, um, usually. Some some of those kinds of academic writing have recommendations uh, for what uh, what what is a next step. When you finish writing your academic piece, it's not over yet because you need to put together an abstract. And uh, I want to just talk quickly about the abstract um, and, and 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 then get back to you. Uh, the the abstract is is a is a is a small piece, and usually. The journal will tell you uh, how many words. It usually, it will be somewhere between 150 and 300 words. And what that that uh, that abstract does is that it it, it has a, at least five five things, and and each of those might really just be a sentence because uh, a sentence or two because uh, you know you don't have a lot of a lot of um, a lot of space. And basically, the abstract. Uh, is a one paragraph, usually to be just one paragraph, uh, which talks about uh, the significance of the journal article or the paper that you've written. Uh, it, it says a little bit about the problem that uh, the paper addresses or the issue that the paper addresses. It talks about the methodology, and that is how, how did you get the information that you did. Uh, uh, and, then, and then it says something about uh, what you found out. Uh, or you know what what your thesis uh, was how your thesis was supported uh, by 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 your findings and then and then the implications of what uh, what you uh, what, what what you have written in the paper and the, and the basic argument about writing academic writing is that when you write uh, that that piece that you have put is going to contribute to something uh, it's going to it's going to contribute to the body of body of knowledge. Uh, it's either going to agree uh, with something that has been said before uh, and extend it or, or build on it, or it is going to disagree with something that has been uh, said before and, and provide a new perspective uh, or provide a, a perspective that is better informed, or it's going to do a little bit of both. You know, it will extend the, the argument or extend the thinking, uh, or it, at the same time, it will also shift the thinking and correct what uh, you as the academic um, feels is, is wrong. Uh, and then, you know, finally, let me comment and say that uh, majority of the times, especially for those of us who are from the majority world, uh, sometimes we feel that uh, we don't have a lot to add. Uh, or a lot to say because it's all been said, um, or sometimes people, you know, people in the West have already 
have already said it so or they know better than than we do or even know better uh about our context uh, than, than they do and and my encouragement to someone listening here uh wanting you know to be to be an academic uh, writer uh, i think my encouragement would be um would be that you have something to say and and uh you i would encourage you to say it to go on and go on ahead and say it um but make sure that you say it well and you say it um you say it clearly i think i'll stop uh for now so stop, stop there for now and and see if there are any uh questions because i think there are, there are a few things that one could do uh you know some specific practical things i think one could do uh to help but let me let me take a pause there well thank you so much uh dr mugambi now when you have done all this uh, there's a question that already has come in and he says he wants to gain a little more extra skills this is from mbere Mastaki mm. Simon from DRC, who said, mm. you like to gain extra skills on writing and publishing of academic articles. He's already published one. Mm. Uh, so what would you say to Mumbere? Because he's already published, but he still feels he needs extra skills around that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, le let, me, let me make, uh, make, make some comments. If, if, you, if you want to get published, uh there there are um some things that, uh, that 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 we can do uh first is is to identify the the journal that uh, that you want uh, to 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 publish in and and uh or the range of journals so i don't know what his uh, what his subject is but uh, for example, um, I write, uh, I write uh, in world, world Christianity. And so I know that uh, the different centers for, for world Christianity, there's one in Edinburgh and they produce a journal. Uh, they, there is um, the Journal of African Christian Thought that, uh, that deals with some of the uh, concepts. Uh, and that is out of, um, out of Ghana. Uh, I know that, uh, you know the Missio Africanas, uh, you know, publishes uh, articles uh, of of interest to world Christianity, and so on. So, so you know, make sure that you know which journal you want to publish, or the range of journals based on the uh, on the subject. Uh, and and usually within each journal they have a theme so for example they'll say well the theme for this year for example the edinburgh uh, journal um uh, world christianity uh journal uh, they 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 want to talk about covid and so if your article has something to do with uh, world christianity and the connection between world christianity and covid then then you would um then you would send your article to them. Many times, journals will issue what are called uh, calls for papers. And basically, that's a, a short communication, usually on email, sometimes on social media, that says, we're looking for papers uh, on this particular subject. We're looking on paper for papers uh, about uh, race relations, for example. I, I saw one the other day about uh, race relations, and we want to know everything about race relations and church history. Uh, someone else will say, well, we want to know about uh, COVID and, and uh, Pentecostal churches. Um, I think there was another one I saw, you know, want to know about uh, COVID and Anglican churches. So, so, so those are themes. And so your article, you, you want, uh, you know, your, your article uh, to, to address those themes. And if you, are, if you have an article that addresses those themes or an, an article that is close to those themes, usually the themes are broad uh, enough to incorporate different perspectives and different thoughts. Then, then you can consider the journal. Journal editors um, are, are, uh, are sensitive uh, to the author's attention to such details. What do I mean? I mean that that uh, a journal editor, um, when you when when I look at at the abstract that you send in, usually they'll ask for for abstracts. Sometimes they'll ask for complete papers. When I see uh, as an as a journal editor that you have um, addressed these particular um, our particular needs, 
uh, if you have addressed uh, the particular theme. For example, if, if you have written your article and you've sent it in, and it actually is addressing COVID and the Anglican Church, then, then you know, they'd be more willing uh, to, to publish your article. I think a lot of times people have, you know, you have your article, uh, but, but you, and you think it's a good article, and, and I have no reason to think it's not a good article, but it doesn't fit the journal that you send it to, or it doesn't fit the themes. Uh, for the journals. Now, um, earlier on in my academic career, I sent, you know, journal um, abstracts to, in response to calls to, uh, for papers, but, but they, they, my, my, my article did not align to, to what, um, what the journals wanted to publish. And so for that reason, uh, my articles never got published. And so you want to make sure that you place your material in the, in the right journal, uh, send it to the right journal, and that will give it uh, the greatest uh, uh, chances of, of success. And then when you send it out, and this is a, you know, a, a response uh, to, the, to the person who asked the question. When you send out, look at your article again and ask yourself, you know, does my article or does my abstract fit uh, with, with, with the, with, within the, the, the journal focus and the, and the theme uh, of, of, of the edition. Um, does my abstract, when I look at the abstract and I read you know, the 150 words or 200 words, uh, 250 words, um, will the journal editor uh, feel that, that uh, my article fits fit in the focus area or, or, or the theme? Uh, and sometimes we, we, we aren't you know, very explicit uh, in, in, the, in those, those um, uh, abstracts that we write. So it's important for us to make sure that we are really, really uh, you know, aligned uh, with the journal uh, and, 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 and our abstracts are aligned with the article. Again, look, look at your article. Now, it could, your article could, your abstract could fit the, the, the journal focus area uh, you know, there'll be a journal of, 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 of African history, journal of African studies in religion, journal of American studies in religion. Um, uh, but, but, and you can fit into, into studies in religion and your article could be aligned with a theme, you know, what it is, COVID. But, but then you have to ask yourself as, as an academic writer or academic author, uh, does my material meet the needs uh, of the audience and the, and the need for the audience really is an academic need what the, what, what the, the audience wants is to is to learn something from your article and so if your article is stating again what has already been said and does not move the discussion forward or it is agreeing with what, what everyone already knows to be obvious in that particular discipline then then uh, your article isn't serving your audience uh, needs you want uh, uh, article, your article to be complete, so it needs to have an introduction, it needs to have a body which, you know, an, an introduction that gives the background, it talks about the arg argument or the thesis. Uh, it has a body that then fleshes out that whole argument with the uh, data, with, uh, with your methodology, with, with all of that, and a conclusion that brings it all together, particularly, and sometimes with, with some recommendations. Uh, so, so you need to look at your article again. Now, again, for, for many of us in the majority world, uh, English is not our first language, it's not our second language. For some of us, it's a third language. For mine, it's, you know, it's a fourth language. Uh, and for many, you know, I, have a, I work with a friend for whom English is his seventh language. Uh, it is possible that, uh, that um, you know, we have something good to say and, uh, and we are coming out of a very rich uh, linguistic and cultural and social context. And so um, I like to encourage uh, writers from the majority world to make sure uh, that they remain rooted in, in their heritage. And for many of our, of our cultures and our societies, you know, we are oral and so we say things, we, we use proverbs. I haven't used many right now, but uh, you know, there's a certain way we talk. Uh, and, 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 and that is good, you know, celebrate that. Uh, but uh, I have learned in the last few years that it, even with our orality in our rich cultural, social, um, economic, geographic heritage, it is important for us to write clearly. And so we must continually sharpen ourselves and make sure 
uh, that that we can uh, we, we are writing clearly, and that means you know when you quote a proverb, you explain it. Uh, when you mention words that people don't know, you know, you, you make sure that, uh, that that you you give the translations over there. Uh, if you write English, like I sometimes do, um, you know, translating from the languages uh, that that I, you know, you have spoken before, uh, then you want to read it again and see whether it makes sense, and get someone else to read it uh, to see whether it makes uh, sense, so that they too can be able to understand. And so, don't forget your heritage, but make sure that you're writing clearly that anyone, anywhere, anywhere in the world uh, can be able to find the meaning and learn. And then finally, uh, enrich your content uh, with contextual things. You know, um, you know, if you're able to tell stories, um, you know, if, if, if they're appropriate, particularly, and I'm talking now about social sciences and the humanities here, um, you know, give, give some proverbs or metaphors or, it's, bring in something from your heritage don't let it be sterile you know just and live in what you're saying uh, but then just make sure that it's clear uh, and that you you explain it and explain it well wow that's quite uh, some content and thank you so much dr mugambi uh, just to build up, there's somebody who has asked, uh, what are some of the common mistakes people make in academic writing and how do you address those? Uh -huh. So um, that's, that's a very, very good, very good question. So um, I'll give you, I'll give you um, just, let, let, let me give you three. Uh, and I'm going to give those from my context, uh, teaching graduate students. Uh, and and teaching um, uh, teaching students here in, in in Kenya and and there could be others but some of the most uh, common mistakes uh, the, the the first one is is to write your article and then not go through it with the tools uh, and so you know to send in your article with with the, with the you know grammatical errors or spelling uh, mistakes and so that's the first. I think first really major uh, thing that I have seen. Um, a second one, and that might be unique to our context, uh, is, is uh, what I call babiosity. Um, using many words uh, to say something that really could be said simply. And uh, I don't know where that came from, but uh, I have been a, you know, a victim of it uh, before where um, it, it sounded more academic to say, to say you know, simple things in more words. And um, some, of, some of the most profound uh, teachers that I have ever sat under uh, are able to, to say very complex things in very simple words. And, and that for me is their genius, you know, that's what, that, that's what makes them, you know, who they are. And, and, uh, and I think in, in academia, um, the, the world uh, will be, the academic world will be a much better place if more academics uh, were able to do that. So verbiosity, spending, you know, using too, too many words. Uh, a third one is what I just mentioned a little earlier, and that is uh, uh, writing in such a way that, um, uh, that, that our, uh, our linguistic heritage uh, comes through. Uh, in, our, in, in how we write uh, English. Now, English for many of us is not, is not the main language, it's not our native language. Uh, and so it's good to find ways of, of improving your own ability to write clearly. Uh, and so clarity, uh, ensuring that you have clarity in your, in your writing, you know, short sentences, um, you know, sentences with a, with a you know, subject and a predicate um, and, um, writing, writing in a in a way that uh, that that moves the discussion forward. You know, active sentences rather than passive voices. Uh, so, so those those are those are the common uh, mistakes. Um, and let me say here that my experience has been uh, that you know, for, from where I have I have you know taught in Uganda, I have taught. In Kenya, I have um, you know served in in, in you know, maybe eight or nine countries uh, on the continent, um, and I have become more convinced that there's so much out there, and there are people with wonderful things to say, 
uh, and to contribute to academia. Um, and so the problem is not the content. The problem oftentimes is the clarity uh, of the content. Oh, what a punchy line. The problem is not the content, the problem is the clarity. Now, there's another question that has come up here is to say something about plagiarism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, plagiarism, uh, simply put, plagiarism is theft of ideas. And um, the, 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 whenever someone takes an idea and does not acknowledge uh, who, who, whose idea that is, or, or even sometimes whenever someone takes direct words, you know, words that were spoken in a particular string, uh, and then, and then they, they pose with them as if the, the words are theirs, uh, that's, what, that's what plagiarism is. Uh, it's a very serious offense in, in, uh, in academia. And uh, every, every academic institution, universities, you know, journal publishers, um, academic publishers uh, like ourselves at Africa Theological Network Press, um, we take that very, very, very seriously. Uh, because in the same way, you know, in the, in the physical world, uh, where if someone came and stole what, what belongs to you, uh, they'd be you know, put, you know, made to face justice. Um, in, in academic writing, uh, plagiarism is very, very serious. Uh, and, and in, you know, it's probably the highest crime, uh, the, the highest uh, crime in academia. Um, you know, theft of someone's words, theft of someone's ideas. Um, but how does one prevent that? Um, two things. Uh, the, the, the first is when you read somewhere and you find someone's ideas and you want to quote them either word for word or even want to quote uh, those ideas, um, you, you then say where they're from. You know, you, you cite and you cite properly. Uh, you know, you say if, if this is the idea, then you, then you cite it. But secondly, if you really must use a person's ideas um, and or you must or you want to use someone's thoughts and ideas or thesis uh, as a springboard for your own, which is perfectly legitimate in, in academic writing, then you must exert yourself and exert your mind and interact with those ideas. You must think about it and interact in writing and, and say, well, do you agree with those ideas? Don't you agree with those ideas? Who else do you think has similar ideas? And what useful thing do you have to add beyond those ideas? Uh, and so when you do that, then, then, then you, know, you, you beat this thing uh, of plagiarism because what you have done is that you have cited, you have uh, been able to, uh, to acknowledge the ideas, but then you yourself have used your mind to, to spring forward uh, and move beyond uh, those, those ideas that you've read. Oh, thank you. So just building up on that, you said people have to cite properly. Mm. How do they cite properly? Just could you give a clue on how citing can be done properly? Okay, so um, uh, so so let us say that you have um, I have I have a book here uh, published in Africa by um, this is this is Sacrifice of Africa written by by Emmanuel Katongole. Uh, this is um, it's a book on on political um, a, a political theology. Uh, of, of, of um, a political theology in Africa. And uh, this, this book, you know, has, you know, it has many, things, many good things that it says. Uh, I just want to, to read just, you know, just one, one, one thing over here. Um, so so um, this is one of my, 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 my favorite quotes from the book. <laughs> Uh, and so this is what um, he says, he, he, he's, he's giving an argument and he says that uh, Africa is in need of, of being able to reimagine its future. That's, that's uh, the sacrifice of Africa. Uh, and I can write that in my own, I can write that in my own uh, article and I say, you know, the task 
required for 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 Africa's to for Africa's future is for an institution uh, to reimagine to help Africans reimagine the future. Now um, that may be a common idea, but if I use these twelve words and I say not only is the church well suited for this task, it is uniquely gifted uh, for it and called to it. That's a sentence directly from this book. And so um, what does properly citing mean? It means I can say, uh, first of all, I agree with the thought or I agree, agree with the idea that the church is, uh, is best suited um, for, for helping Africans think in new ways about their future. See what I've done there? I have used my own words. Uh, he uses the words reimagine. I've used my own words. And then I would put into, into quotes, um, uh, opening uh, inverted commas, uh, not only is the church suited for this task, it is uniquely gifted for it and called to it. Closed uh, inverted commas. Then I would put there, depending on the, on the uh, citation style, I put um, uh, Emmanuel Katongole, The Sacrifice of Africa, uh, page 100. Uh, and one. So, so that is citation, and I've done both those things. I have, I have said what I feel about those ideas, but then I've also quoted, and then I have, I have uh, uh, cited the article, uh, and cited the book, and then, uh, and then given some, a very direct place where someone could go and see that. Now, obviously, my, my writing, I would have been saying something else, or maybe I'm using that point uh, to advance my own thesis. Uh, on something else, so so that's how uh, that's how you do it. Uh, but always recognize that uh, you know you can't build your whole um, you know your whole article, like piece of academic writing, or you're writing for that journal, um, and use just uh, someone else's ideas. You've got to give your own ideas. You've got to to construct your own argument. Um, you can use other people's arguments as building blocks. Uh, but but uh, but you have to have your own uh, argument. Well, oh, thank you so much for that. Uh, that's quite profound. There's a question here from um, Judith, uh, who says, "Hey, do you know some free apps that students can use to test plagiarism and meet the allowed percentage before going to a supervisor?" Okay, that's. Um, Plagiarism apps uh, are not, they're, they're not very, they're, they're not very, uh, very, very common uh, because plagiarism testing requires huge databases. So it's an expensive thing to do. But if you're a student, um, then you don't need a, 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 a plagiarism app because you're the one writing. <laughs> you. Just make sure you do what I've said. <laughs> you should be fine. <laughs> make sure that you are you, you you are writing your own ideas. You're writing uh, when when you cite someone else's ideas, paraphrase them and say say them uh, in your own way. Uh, and 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 make sure that you do the hard uh, homework of ensuring that you have you have um, you have written your own ideas. There's a resource though, having said that, um, there's a book called The Craft of Research um, by, um, it's, it's by Kulum et al. Uh, there are like three, three or, or, or four authors. Um, let, me, let me put that here, Kulum, uh, The Craft of Research. Uh, um, I just want to type it for our audience here. So, so that book has got a good, uh, has, uh, has, has a good, um, um, what would I say, like, like a good uh, uh, piece on, on, on plagiarism and, and give some good tips. Uh, 
But again, to, to talk to the students, I would highly encourage that uh, one begins to craft that way of thinking and that way of writing. Think original, write in your own sentences. Um, use other people's ideas as building blocks for your own idea. Then you find that uh, you, never, you never have um, problems with plagiarism. Thank you very much. And I uh, hope, Judith, you found your answer. Now, Dr. Mugambi, as just we build on, uh, there's a question that has come from John Sirengo of Kenya, who wants to know the cost of publishing an article or a journal and how, how much to invest in writing and all that. And so I want to combine that with, uh, let's talk about publishing work and then let's talk about costing or payment. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does mm -hmm. that work? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, a, that's a good question. So. Uh, number one, academic writing um, has very little, very little uh, monetary value. Uh, the purpose of academic writing is different from the purpose of popular writing. So if one writes an academic book, uh, I would like to say that, that, uh, that you know, you'll get some royalties out of it. But the truth of the matter is that uh, you'll never be able to make a living out of, uh, out of academic writing. So for that matter, uh, academic writing, uh, very few, very few uh, kinds of academic writing will pay you anything. And so for journals, very few journals give any, any, a, a, any monetary, uh, mo monetary, um, remuneration for articles, very few. Um, and some of those that do maybe are for limited circulation and uh, have high subscriptions uh, from, from, uh, from large universities. So very rarely, very rarely. Academic books, you might get some royalties, but again, academic books have a limited circulation. They're not like novels or, or so on. So uh, academic books have a circulation of of um, you know, some of them will circulate only, you know, 100 books or 200 books, and the cost of of that uh, of of producing those books is so high that uh, you know publishers just barely make it. That's why some academic books are expensive. You know, fifty dollars, hundred dollars uh, per book. There are even publishers who just publish books for libraries, and so the the you know they publish books you know, that, that, that retail for, you know, $200. Uh, I saw one for $230. Uh, dollars. Um, I think I have one over here that's, that's $230 for one book. And so for majority, majority world, um, majority world uh, academics, um, you know, that's, that, that's way out of reach. And so uh, the simple answer is, you know, people don't get paid uh, for, for, um, for academic, for academic writing, uh, and and um, there are some journals in in uh, I've seen uh, here in Africa that uh, will request a modest uh, publishing fee. Now um, there are contexts where you know journals that would require a publishing fee, even publishers that would require a publishing fee. Uh, might, are sometimes called vanity publishers. So, so long as you can pay, then you know you can get published, even if your article is not really that good. Uh, so, you know they, 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 there are pros and cons for that. Uh, but I know that there are some publishers who actually do need that money uh, to be able to put together quality production uh, for for the journal. Uh, but one must be very careful if you are asked. Uh, to to pay for for uh, you know to publish a journal uh, article, particularly if it is not linked uh, to a to a, 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 an accredited uh, institution, uh, an accredited uh, academic institution. So it's really 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 important for for one if you want to publish and you want to you know put in money into the publishing. Uh, find out about that particular journal. Um, sometimes there are some which are predatory, uh, which means that they, they'll publish your thing, but there's no circulation and there's no quality. It's not peer reviewed. Uh, you want your journal, um, if it is academic, to be peer reviewed. It means someone else will look at it and determine whether it is 
good, good quality enough uh, to be published. Uh, you asked uh, what should someone or how much should someone be prepared to invest in their writing? I think, I think uh, if, if you are an academic or you want to get into an academic career, uh, particularly in our country, if you have a master's uh, degree, it means that uh, you can enter into the trajectory, particularly if you have experience, many years experience, then you can be a practitioner, a teaching practitioner. Uh, and um, academic, a teaching practitioner can have a master's degree uh, but uh, uh, an academic author uh, uh, or an academic lecturer uh, would need to have, uh, uh, you know, a doctoral a doctoral degree. Uh, if you are if you are entering into that, then there are a few things that you can invest in. Uh, first is you you can invest yourself in a good word processor, uh, and there are some good free word processors, LibreOffice, for example, or OpenOffice. Uh, are very good because they also have tools that can help you, you know, write uh, or tools, you know, they, they at least have a spelling checker uh, that, is, that is decent. Uh, some of them have more than a spelling checker. Some of them have a grammar checker, for example, Microsoft Word. Now that's a bit more expensive, uh, but it has, it has a grammar checker that, uh, that can point you. At, at the end of the day, you still have to be the one to write your uh, your article, but uh, but at least can point to you some potential grammar uh, errors. And then uh, you want to invest in a good computer, obviously, you know, uh, one that uh, will not pack up on you <laughs> when you when you're writing. I know that is a little harder for many of us from the majority world, but if you can, uh, the the cost of these things has gone down enough. Um, in terms of software, I think invest in a good piece of software, uh, but be careful about uh, online only uh, softwares uh, because those ones uh, can limit you because, for example, even in our country, uh, we do have challenges with connectivity. So uh, get something that you can work with even when there's no power or where they, when there isn't any, uh, where, when there isn't any uh, internet connectivity. If you want to invest in writing of, of an academic book, and all the points that I've shared here would go, not only are they for journal articles, they also work for academic books, uh, like you know, the one that I recently wrote. Um, let me say, uh, if you're writing a larger work, if you're writing a, a book, uh, then try and find either online or near you people who can either help you read your work or people that you can pay uh, to edit your work. And the editors then will, will look at your work, they'll find what the, uh, the you know, the, some of the grammar issues, they, they'll be able to check your work for clarity uh, and so on. Uh, and this is true of everywhere, because even for my friends who are published in the, uh, in the West and English is a first language, they still will send their work to someone and pay, pay the person. Sometimes it can be expensive, you know, it's way out of reach. Uh, you know, it can cost 300, 400, $500, $500 uh, for, um, you know, for, for uh, you know, one to look at your, at your work. Uh, but if you can find, you know, people close, one trick that I use is I divide my, my books uh, into, into chapters and then I get different people to read the chapters and then they send them back in. Uh, that's another thing that you can do and leverage on your relationship. So that's something that one can do. Uh, but the biggest investment that you can make in terms of your academic writing is um, reading, sharpening your mind, and then writing. Uh, there's no substitute for that. Um, read widely, develop your library, or, or you know, find a library that you can read. And then secondly, keep writing. Even if your articles get rejected, you know, keep writing, present your papers in conferences, then you're going to get sharper and sharper and, 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 and better and better at your craft. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So we need to read widely, find a library and develop. Our, thank you for that. Now, um, Anthony Haropia says, we'd love to publish more from the Global South Entrepreneurs and business people. So there is an opportunity for those who want to write. And he says, a good abstract of what you like to write will be very helpful. So if you want to uh, gain some 
insights or you want to publish around the areas of entrepreneurship and business, uh, there you are, you have an opportunity that has been presented to you. There's also one more question, uh, Dr. Kiyama here from Paul. And Paul says, as academic editor, I often find manuscripts with inadequate source cit citations, incomplete or incorrect. Would you, as an author, prefer that your editor simply fix the problems or query and explain what is needed? Uh, that's, a good, uh, that's a good question uh, there. Uh, I, think, I think the first, the first point of call, um, having been on both ends of the thing, so as an editor, but also as, a, as an author, I think the first thing that I would I would really prefer uh, that that that, uh, that that works well is if the citations are incomplete or inaccurate, then they need to be sent back to the author. I think the author needs to have a say uh, in in those in those citations. So so for example, um, some books um, like iconic books. I'll give you an example of one um, um, African. Religions and Philosophy uh, by, uh, by John, uh, John S. Mbiti. Um, this is a book, the, the first edition of which was in 1970. Uh, now, th there have been subsequent editions of the book um, republished by other people. So someone wants, uh, the, the pagination in some of those is different. So you could find that there's a book that was published a long time ago and a book that, uh, the same book that was published, published more recently. Another one is Concept of God in Africa. Um, which was republished uh, more recently. So, so you know, you have different editions. Uh, so it's good to send the, the 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 thing back to the to the author for them to clarify, and then and then the editor can then pick that up. And I, the reason why I say this, and I say this from my own context, because they are they are, they are publishing houses that have huge resources where you're able to dedicate someone to spend two three weeks with a manuscript. Uh, my experience is, is that my publishing experience here in Africa is that you know we don't have those kinds of resources. Uh, sometimes editors are working on four, four five, six uh, different manuscripts at a time. So there's just no time to go and check every citation and all of that. Um, if you know if the citation looks incomplete or or, or has, has has a challenge, you know then I'll send it back uh, to the to the author. So that's that's uh, that's what I would do, and then uh, from there, uh, when the when the when the manuscript comes back, uh, hopefully it's a bit cleaner. It's it's moved that has moved a little further along, uh, and it, and it can be it can be addressed. Now, uh, let me also say that um, incomplete citations uh, can be can be solved or can be helped. Uh, using existing resources. Uh, for, so for example, if you have a, a citation, citation software like Zotero, Mendeley, uh, uh, I think EndNote, um, some of those can actually help if one is able to, uh, to get um, you know, complete or large bibliographies um, that, have been, that have, been, have been set up. So you can use a software uh, as, an, as an editor with, with, within a publishing house to, to be able to, to clean up uh, some of those. Uh, it isn't always easy. It, it takes a lot of resources. If, if the publisher has those resources, then, then it's good you know, for the publisher to do that and pick that up and make sure that it is, it is the right, um, it, it is done well. But, but that isn't always the case, particularly in the majority world. Well, great. Thank you so much. So there's a follow-up question from Paul who says, have you seen or read Motima Adler's How to Read a Book? If so, would you recommend this book to help writers read and write more clearly and con congently? I think I'm getting that right. Yes, more clearly and cogently. Thank you, Paul. Um, I, every master's class that I teach, um, I require... <laughs> I require my students <laughs> to familiarize themselves with Mortimer Adler's and Van Do Charles Van Doren's book, uh, How to Read a Book. Um, I have a small story about that book. So, so, so my, my father is also an academic. And, uh, and uh, he had that book uh, in, at, at home. 
And I always saw the book and always wondered, what, what is this, you know, how, why would my dad have a book about how to read a book? And, uh, and, he, and he, he writes books. And so, I mean, I looked at it once or twice, and, uh, but I was young then. Uh, but I, I encountered that book again in my master's class and it uh, changed, it changed my, my perception of, uh, of, of uh, what, you know, what reading is about and what writing is about. And so ever since that time, um, whenever I teach my, my um, you know, graduate students, whether they're master's students or PhD students, um, I, I usually will encourage people to, to read uh, how to read a book. And so I, I actually give a lecture on, on that book uh, and, and give some, some thoughts because not only is it good uh, at teaching students how to read, uh, because, because it's very important for them to read, uh, particularly for us here who are oral and you know, books are not easy to come by and, and English you know, is a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth uh, language. Uh, then, then you need a book that sort of helps you begin to think about reading as an exercise. Uh, and then secondly, if you can read and, and, and it, it explains how to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, build you know, arguments, how, how to read different kinds of books, then it can help you become a better writer. So I do have, uh, I do have a, a, lect a lecture uh, that I require my students uh, to, to read. The, the book is... Uh, um, How to Read a Book by Mortima Adler, and uh, one, of, one of its uh, editions uh, includes uh, Ch uh, Van Doren. I think it's Charles Van Doren, if I remember correctly. Okay, there you are. So if you want to read, know how to read a book well, please grab that book and uh, read it. Uh, Paul says here, I agree with the comment that Zotero is a good software prog No. Yeah, there's a question mark there, but uh, I'm not sure that's a, a, um, a question. Very helpful for dissertation writing and editing. Uh, and so thank you very much for your comments and questions. Um, then there's also one more no, that we have answered. And so we are just coming close to the close of our webinar this evening. And uh, Dr. Kiyama, what will be your parting shot? What will you summarize your webinar you know, you said you have to have a conclusion and the conclusion brings everything together. So we want to test you on conclusion. Mm -hmm. so, so I think if someone is, uh, if you've been listening to, to this uh, all uh, through, throughout the session, my hope for you is that uh, you understand that, uh, that academic writing is, is a systematic kind of writing, uh, which is very intentional. You know, in terms of the content, how you write it. Um, but a good academic piece will require um, an abstract, which we've talked about, an abstract that, uh, that guides the, the journal uh, and the general reader about your article. Uh, and then when you do get around to writing the journal, uh, the, the journal article, or whatever piece of academic writing it is, uh, that it is going to be of absolute importance for you to write original material uh, and then to write it clear. Um, I cannot you know, emphasize the importance of writing your material clearly uh, so that your audience can be able to benefit from it. Thank you so much. And uh, now there are people who are also asking if they wanted to reach you and uh, get to have some time to learn a lot a little more how can they reach you and then uh the book that you just said motimas somebody is asking philip committee would like to get the name properly so if you could also type it in the uh chat box i think it will help and uh, with together with what you have had and so friends thank you so much for tuning in or for connecting this evening i think this has been an excellent webinar and Dr. Kiyama, we want to thank you so much uh, for that immense amount of knowledge and content that you have shared this evening. And I'm sure many will be helped. Remember, Harop had put there um, and given you an opportunity to write. So please connect with that and uh, get in touch with him. You can, uh, as we finish now, you can quickly write him 
something uh, personal there so that he can give you your contacts. So I hope you could just put there your contacts for those who like to uh, reach you so that they can do uh, that article uh, as they are led to do that. But uh, from MI and all of us who want to say thank you so much for making time to be part of this webinar. This is part of a series of webinars that we host as MAI International and MI Africa. And so we want to uh, invite you to keep on checking our, our website and also watching the social media spaces as we post more of them. And we wish you well as you go to write. We are looking forward to some quality writing that is coming also from Africa, uh, because somebody has said, if you want to hide something from an African, uh, put it in a book. And I think we need to uh, just uh, come against that statement and do some writing and uh, show people that actually Africans also read. And for, I'm only saying that for those African friends of mine who are on this particular platform, but I know we have people from different nationalities God bless you. Have a good evening, a good morning, a good afternoon, wherever uh, this uh, uh, webinar has found you. And looking forward to have you another time. God bless you. Bye-bye.